Welcome to Ask PC Mag, where our tech experts answer your tech questions. I'm Dan Costa, editor in chief of PC Mag, and I'm joined today by John Burek, who runs our hardware team and does all of our laptop and desktop testing. John, thanks for joining me. Hey, happy to be here. So our question today is a pretty fundamental one. It's how do I choose what CPU to get for my laptop? How should people go about that? Well, that's a pretty good question um, because actually a lot of the conventional wisdom around buying CPUs is comes from the desktop world where people think of those things as like an Intel Core i3 versus an i7. How much power do I need? Um, and really when you're dealing with laptops, um, it's actually a little more complicated and you need to look at it from a different angle. So there's a um, first thing to understand is that there are three classes basically in laptops um, these days. There are laptops that use ultra low power CPUs, ones that use low power CPUs, and then ones that use performance level CPUs. Most of them are going to use the ones in the middle, the low power CPUs, and those are the ones that if you're just sort of casually looking, you're probably going to see. If you're looking at for instance, a gaming laptop or a workstation laptop, and you're looking for something specifically with power, you're going to be looking in that high performance class. And then the low, the ultra low performance class really is mostly in extremely thin machines and in um, tablets and tablets that tear away from the keyboard. Um, Two and ones. Yeah. So the thing to look for with that, if you are shopping, there's three classes. Um, the three classes are denoted by letter. Um, the low power ones are denoted by uh, U, and that's what you're going to see most laptop CPUs are based on. The really low power ones, the ultra low power, have a Y in the name, and then the high end ones have an H in the name. And is there still a, uh, a battle between Intel and AMD in the mobile space? I know in the desktop space, it's super competitive, uh, a little bit less so in the, in the laptop space? Uh, it's getting more competitive, actually, specifically this year. Um, for the most part, in years past, AMD pretty much was relegated to sort of budget machines under five, six hundred dollars that were, you know, sort of sold in uh, mass market sort of places. Um, these days, um, AMD has gotten it looks pretty, uh, you know, pretty comparable in mainstream and uh, high end classes with certain new chips that they've come out with in their uh, mobile Ryzen series. We've only seen a few laptops with them so far, but so far they've been pretty promising. But for the most part, when you're looking at um, any given laptop, you're going to use the same scheme, the U, H, and Y scheme. And uh, AMD has also adopted that and will continue to adopt that, you know, in laptops that come out this year. So the other thing people look at when they're shopping for CPUs is that there's multiple cores in each individual line and there's multiple threads. Uh, is it easy enough to just say the more cores, the faster the processor is going to run? Um, I would say yes, all, all else being equal. I mean, when you're looking at a given class, so if you're looking at like the ultra low versus the low versus the high performance class, you're going to see a stepping within each of those classes that will be the higher you go in that class, the more cores and threads you'll have. And that matters mostly, I would say, to people who are doing sort of performance related um, tasks like uh, video editing, photo editing, things that they're basically sitting there waiting for their computer to complete some sort of a rendering or other crunching task. So generally speaking, if you're looking at um, two CPUs, they're of the same power class, then you're sort of looking after that at how many cores and threads it supports. And some C mobile CPUs will support, say, four cores and only four threads, which means basically do four tasks at the same time in a given program or across multiple programs. And then some will do what's called hyper-threading, that's what Intel calls it, or symmetric multiprocessing is sort of like the generic term for it, where each core can do two things at once. So if you're doing stuff like Adobe Premiere or other sort of um, tasks that are really heavy on the CPU, that's where you want to start looking at things both in terms of how, how can I get the most cores possible and how can I um, also be able to process as many threads as possible at the same time. And that's where opting for something with multi-threading and a lot of cores matters. So on the flip side of the performance of the CPU is the battery life of the laptop. And those are sort of often inversely correlated, but like what's the range that we're talking about here? How, how long does a, a highly efficient CPU last compared to a highly powerful and maybe power inefficient CPU last? Right. So, so it's interesting. It actually all depends on two, well, it actually depends on two things, probably more than that. But the two big things are A, the laptop designer's choices they made when putting that laptop together and B, what you're actually doing with the laptop. The thing is, is the laptop designer might use that really efficient CPU to put the CPU into, say, like a tablet form factor where you don't have a lot of room for a battery. So the idea being, even though you've got this really efficient CPU, the battery doesn't have to be as big. So you might get the same amount of battery life you might get from a larger machine 
with a less efficient CPU, but a larger battery to compensate for it. Um, but that said, uh, these days, um, even gaming laptops, which are notorious for you know dying pretty quickly off the plug, um, if you're doing everyday tasks with them, they'll let you know, a lot of the last five, six hours, which is a lot more than they used to. Um, the very best really thin laptops, which are generally using those U-series processors I was talking about, can go anywhere from 10 to, we've seen a few on our testing, go over 20 hours. Um, and again, what you're doing with the laptop makes a big difference. If you're doing stuff that's power intensive, if you have a very high resolution screen, all those things sort of factor into what you do. But just for everyday you know, work, um, you're going to see probably longer battery life than if you're doing something that's constantly hitting the processor, you know, hard, or if you have your screen all the way up to maximum brightness, all these things sort of um, affect, you know, what you get, but you should expect a full day's um, like sort of productivity work out of any given laptop that you're looking at at this point, And you can tell, you know, um, relative to each other, how long a laptop is likely to last by reviews like ours, you know, which test on a baseline. Yeah. Can you, can you get into that a little bit? Because I mean, we we try and test we test laptops, we test individual CPUs as well. But um, you know, we're trying to account for a variety of different situations, and we test for both performance and for battery life. Can you just get into a little bit about how we go about doing that? Sure. Yeah. Um, the thing with battery laptop testing is, is you're never going to make everybody happy. Even laptop vendors acknowledge this because, for instance, you might spend half your day in a spreadsheet and half your day on Netflix, and if you um, you know, are that person and we happen to test that way, that's great. But the thing is, is no two people are alike and everybody has sort of different usage patterns. And sometimes they leave their laptops sitting there for a while while they're doing other things. So what we do on PC Mag is, is we run basically a video rundown um, where we play the same video on every laptop straight through until the battery is drained with the, with the uh, screen at half brightness and the uh, audio turned all the way up. Um, and what that tells us when we look at them, look at all these laptops relative to each other is sort of the battery potential. It doesn't say you will get this nine hours or 20 hours. It says this one relative to this one perform better. And some laptops will, you know, have greater strengths depending on their screen. For instance, like a 4k screen is going to suck more power than a 1080p screen. Um, a machine that's used for gaming is going to draw the battery down really fast if you're gaming and also probably will throttle the performance. So different laptops are built sort of for their purpose with the battery and processor that is appropriate for what they're going to be used for. So it's a little bit of a non-answer, but what mm -hmm. it comes down to is you got to look at reviews and see how they yeah. rate relative to each other. I like the answers that end up with telling people to go to PCMag.com to get more information. <laughs> we like that. I like that too. All right, John, thanks. I think that's a great primer on how to pick a CPU for your laptop. And that's Ask PC Mag for today. If you've got more questions for us, you can ask them on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Just use the hashtag Ask PC Mag. And of course, you can find more information on PCMag.com. We will see you there.